Is it possible to bring someone back from the dead? This is the science of resurrection. Any investigation into resurrection would be incomplete without talking about zombies. But I'm not interested in brain-eating zombies. The origin of the folklore is far more terrifying. In Haitian voodoo, a zombie is someone who has been poisoned with a combination of neurotoxins, causing them to enter a comatose state. After being buried alive, they are dug up and force-fed a hallucinogenic cocktail, keeping them in a zombie-like state so they can be used for slave labour. However, scientific investigation into these rituals has shown the poisons used contain so little of the neurotoxin they are unlikely to cause any such zombification. Most cases are dismissed as the result of mental illness or even mistaken identity. So zombies remain fictional, but the neurotoxin I mentioned provides our next clue. Considered a delicacy in Japan, the pufferfish is the second most poisonous vertebrate in the world, containing a neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin, or TTX for short. TTX is 100 times more deadly than potassium cyanide, and just 25 milligrams of it will kill you. It binds to the sodium channels in your nerve cells, causing paralysis and death in a matter of hours. But a non-lethal dose of TTX slows the victim's breathing and heart rate dramatically. They become paralysed and appear dead. But after a few hours or even days, the effects wear off and they wake up. Which is why it's always a good idea to delay the funeral of any victim of pufferfish poisoning for a few days. Just in case. What about freezing our bodies after we die? Can we switch life off and on by freezing and thawing our bodies? In short, no. When our skin freezes, we get frostbite, which sucks all the water out of the surrounding cells, causing them to collapse and die. So even if you froze your body, ready to thaw out in the distant future, when new technologies can revive and cure whatever killed you, it would be pointless. The tissues in your body would have suffered too much damage. There would be nothing worth thawing out. And this is precisely the reason organs for donation cannot be indefinitely frozen prior to transplantation. However, this doesn't mean that suspended animation in humans is beyond our grasp. In 1999, Anna Bagenholm became trapped under thick ice in a skiing accident in Norway. Her body temperature dropped to 13.7 degrees Celsius, and her heart stopped. She was rescued and underwent a cardiopulmonary bypass, where her blood was circulated and rewarmed outside her body before being reinserted into her veins. After three hours with no heartbeat, she was brought back to life. So how did she survive? Her body had time to cool, meaning her metabolism could slow down. Her brain was so cold that by the time her heart stopped, her body needed very little oxygen, meaning CPR could sustain her before she received medical treatment. Anna Bagenholm recovered with no brain damage, but she remains an exception. The survival rate from extreme hypothermia at temperatures below 28 degrees is a mere 10 to 30%. Inducing cold temperatures or using low concentrations of toxic substances like hydrogen sulfide reduce the body's need for oxygen, meaning suspended animation has been achieved in vertebrates like zebrafish and mice for several hours. But humans remain some way off. So is it possible to bring someone back from the dead? Yes, depending on your definition of death. Clinical death is the point at which the heart stops beating along with breathing and blood circulation, but application of medical treatments such as CPR, defibrillation or injection of adrenaline can reverse this and bring someone back to life. But after a few minutes without oxygen, brain cells will die from the lack of it and brain death remains irreversible. But one thing is for sure, the more we learn about these biological processes from poisonous fish to extreme hypothermia, the closer we get to achieving suspended animation in humans. And even if we can't reverse death, we can at least get better at preventing it. Why not subscribe to Head Squeeze? Take your finger out of your nose and put it here, or on your mouse if you're still living in the 1990s.